Stand by for action. Thanks, Jonah. My name is Dave Miller. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy, and I want to welcome you to part two of this episode of the Unpleasant Blind Guy on EDL Radio. Now remember, if you want to contact me with comments, questions, show suggestions, awesome American suggestions, I'm available at UBG Contact on Twitter, or I can also be found as Dave Milner or Agador, that's A-G-G-E-D-O-R, on Mublet, the Tea Party Community, Spreely, Mines, MeWe, or Gab. Now let's begin. And welcome back to the English Defense League Radio Show with your host, Jeff Thunderbolt Mitchell. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff. Yeah, nice one, Dave. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, just to let people know that, uh, you know, when we do these, uh, we, we broadcast live and um, do these shows, that um, maybe some people, they, they might have a situation that where they, they get into the chat. Um, we'll say to you, you know, um, if you want to listen to the, the show tonight, as soon as we've done the show, it doesn't take long to process it, and then it's ready to podcast and, and do, you know, do its rounds. So uh, you can always go to, uh, you know, uh, blogtalkradio.com and uh, just check the English Defence League radio show, and then you'll see uh, the latest, um, you know, the latest edition of the, the radio show. Or you can always go... Uh, to www.englishdefenseleague.org.uk, the website yeah. where the radio show is embedded there. So, you know, you've never got to worry about, <clears throat> oh, I have a problem getting into the chat. Because some people do. There's, a, there's a problems that people <clears throat> sometimes get. They need to be directed at mm. how to get. That's the unfortunate thing about Blog Talk Radio. We do have problems with some of our, our great friends and guests getting to the chat. So, you know, um, we don't want you to miss anything. So, you know, just remember, after we finish broadcasting, just wait for about 10 minutes or so, and, uh, yeah, go to where I told you. You know, just go there. Uh, don't forget our website as well. You know, if you like what we're doing uh, and um, you appreciate what we do, there's always uh, a donate page there. You know, it's not for me. It's for the organisation. Uh, I fund myself. Well, on this radio show, I fund myself. So... You know, it's not about me, it's about the organisation and the great people, our great media team out there, isn't it, Dave? It's everybody involved, you know, in uh, what we do. So I just want to put that across to, to people just to let them know, you know, that they can, um, we podcast, so, you know, you can listen to us on the, on the go, you know, you wake up in the morning, you can play us <laughs> on the way to work. So, am I right, Dave? Or am I right? Oh, yeah, man. Uh, you know, that was a nice info hit, too, yeah. I mean, um, our podcasts are available there, and um, and of course they'll be. This will be processed, and uh, right now because we have a backlog, it'll be. This will be played about a month later. This show will be played about a month later at um, the Unpleasant Blind Guy page at Spreaker dot com. All right, and on those um, on that site, you can actually hear the show in little half hour or so increments. So it's a little bit easier, especially people are people Pretty are cool busy. Way, they got to work. Cool. Yeah, yeah. They they they, they got to work. They got to you know do this and that. You know, and they may not have but maybe half an hour or so to devote. Um, you know, in a given day. But you know, there it is, and uh, and there's stuff there right now from previous shows we've done, and uh, you know, yeah. so there are lots of great ways that you guys can listen to this program, and we appreciate everybody that listens. Like Jeff says, if there wasn't you. Yeah. There wouldn't be us. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's true, brother. Dave. That's true. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's what it's all about. I mean, uh, myself uh, and Dave and uh, Jane, when she can join us, we know her work rows not heavy. Mm-hmm. This is um, this is what we we really want to bring to put the message out there uh, for stories that you don't always you're not going to come across on the mainstream media. Come on, guys. Oh uh, you no, know, you're not. Um, <laughs> At least you know that uh, when we do these radio shows, you get in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing mm. truth. So help us God at that night. Oh, my God, I found that I was in the dock then, didn't I, Dave? 
Yep, and nothing but the truth will help us, God. You, you, you just like just like Lonnie Poindexter says on Lion Chasers Radio. By the way, guys, that has changed. Um, uh, if you guys want to listen to Lonnie's program now, um, I believe he's on at 8.45 p.m. on Saturdays at uh, AFR.net. So check check AFR.net for the times. Um, Lonnie Poindexter, Lion Chasers Radio. You won't be disappointed. You'll get good Christian and political yeah. commentary on there. Get to it because you'll enjoy it. Now, Jeff, we were talking about public demonstrations and things for Tommy Robinson. And, uh, you know, the the question has come up, How? what good is it? I mean, is it not just a bunch of people jumping around and going over the top and chanting and doing this and that? And, and, and it really did no good anyway because Tommy Robinson's in prison and all of these things. And that got me to thinking, Jeff. When uh, when I heard that that um, if that one individual is saying these things, other people have to be too. So I think I think it's worth it. And listeners, Jeff and I had this conversation. I think it's worth it to kind of explain to people why this is being done. Because to an outsider, especially to someone who isn't quite familiar with what's been going on, they might look at this and, and wonder why. So I, Jeff, I think it's worth discussing. And I'd like to throw my two cents in here, if I could. Um, Please do, guys. Go ahead, brother. People, people need to remember what this regime in the United Kingdom, um, supposedly conservative and everything else, has done with people like Melanie Shaw. That woman's mind has practically been destroyed, and she's been imprisoned Um just to protect the politicians there. People need to remember what was done with Alex Klaus, who makes tremendous music, some of which you'll hear on this show. They put him in an insane asylum. They put him in an insane asylum because they don't like his views, okay, his his, um, pro-UK and anti-Islam views uh, that they believe that he had. They did all these things to him. Now, I don't think We've got just that to it explain is... that, that Alex Klaus, um, we, he come onto the show, didn't he, Dave? Three days later, they dragged him off the street, and then they put him away, and basically, no trial, no nothing. They just uh, sectioned him, and he was uh, mm-hmm. put away in a dark hole, or wherever it is, um, and um, all drugs, God knows what else they did to this man. Um, but mm-hmm. just because... Just because he was speak, speaking out against the n- narrative that they put out there, go against it. He, yeah, there's that. There's yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Dave. I just want to say that because no, no. he's a dear friend of mine, isn't he? You know, and yours, Dave. Oh yeah. Well, and, and it affects people when when something like that happens, and it seems like it's it's really close to you. And that's my point here, uh, guys. Is that it isn't that far a stretch of imagination. Uh, knowing how much the UK government despises Tommy Robinson, how they're uh, even even trying to teach school children that he's the equivalent of Hitler and things of that nature, that they wouldn't, if there wasn't massive, very public, sometimes over the top demonstrations supporting him, just have him and his family disappeared. The fact that uh, Tommy Robinson is alive, I think. And Jeff, you can uh, you can weigh in here. Has very much to do with the fact that he has very public support, not only from uh, in the UK but from Canada and the United States and all over the planet. Australia, uh, Jeff, do, do you think do you think I am I off on that? Do you think I'm right? No, it's far from it, Dave. You are. I mean, Tommy is, uh, mm. and they hate this, but. Tommy is loved by a lo- lots of people across the globe because of mm-hmm. his stance, because of the way he keeps pushing on and getting the truth out there, exposing the evil. That is what it is, and that is why, um, you know, we that follow Tommy, we that follow the EDL as we've done, we continue to do so because it is the we're on the right side of history. 
you know, I mean, this is it. The, mm -hmm. We are on the right side of history. Uh, there's a lot of flailing and gnashing of teeth uh, with what's going on with the globalists in league. They know their time's mm -hmm. coming to the end. The same with the mainstream media. Their time, these dinosaurs' times are coming to the end. The times of tyranny, lies and deception is uh, soon going to be a come be upon them. And there will be nowhere, nowhere that they can hide. Nowhere. Yeah. They'll be exposed to the world. And justice will be seen to be done. That's, well, that's the, just me. I probably yeah. don't reflect on Edward's views, but that is me. That's the way I see things, the way it should be done. And also, just to, just one, one more point, just to say, all the time, all the time, we've been doing demonstrations up and down the country, across the country, certain people say, oh, what has it achieved? I'll tell you what it's achieved. Shall I tell you it, what it's achieved? It Do it, exposed Rotherham. It exposed what was going on. We didn't know quite how deep and bad it really was, but we that's knew that's why point, we kept man. going there. We that's totally point, are bro. justified from everything we've done, everything we said. Yes, we're noisy. That's the whole point. We go there for the communities, the people, the girls that have been raped, molested, passed around. We'll continue to do it. When the people out there think, oh, I don't think it's really working. Well, that's down to you. Just sit back, roll over and take it. Do you know what I mean? Well, we're not. We will never surrender, ever. So whatever people might think about us, the fight continues. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, that brings me into the other the other reason, really. Now, there's a second which I might discuss um, after the middle of September, but for right now, the third reason, okay, uh, and that is that what these demonstrations achieve is that they help the people to not fall into despair because when you fall into despair, the cause is lost. I don't care what, what it, it is. When you fall into despair, the cause is lost. And, and we have to remember, Jeff, th this is the reason that I put this one thing in the script, which, folks, Jeff uh, sends me the scripts that he wants for the show, and I tweak them just a bit. And I put this in, uh, this one quote in this time. From what from that Winston Churchill speech that we hear at the start of every show, uh, neither the sudden shock of battle, and this is the important bit, guys, nor the long drawn trials of vigilance and exertion, will wear us down. That's the point, uh, guys. We're not going to win this all in one go, uh, and I know it's tiring. Uh, the uh, there are people who have been to demonstrations in the UK. Um, you know, from this side of the pond, and I say God bless them. I wish I could have done the same. Um, you know, but uh, but for what I can do, I'm here for the long haul. And and it does hurt when we don't get the big wins like we should be getting, and things like that. But we will take the small victories. We can't concentrate. Jeff, on what we and, and listeners on what we don't have and what we aren't achieving, but we can we can talk about and be grateful for the things that we do achieve, and the things that we do have. And one of the things that we have is community. And that community getting together, like they're going to do on the third, is the one thing that helps an entire people, not just in the UK but around the world. Uh, to, it helps them to keep from falling into despair because once that happens, you're done. That's the other reason. Yes, if, uh, yeah, exactly. Now, Jeff, uh, yes, uh, here's here's some, no, no. You're right. You're right, man. You you cooked. You're right. You're totally right. This is why Jeff runs the show, folks. Um, Jeff, let me tell you something, and listeners, let me tell you something about myself. Um, I call myself the unpleasant blind guy. But, you know, as a kid, I told people that I was going to grow up and be a United States Air Force fighter pilot and then drive race cars for a living. <laughs> That's what I told them. 
why shouldn't you it, have it, that and, dream, Dave? Why shouldn't you? Oh, it was a it was a great dream for a kid, but you know what? It didn't happen, and partly because I am the unpleasant blind guy. That doesn't mean that I have a bad leg, y'all. Um, but and and there was a time in my life, guys, and I, I'm you know I'm just going to point this out because we're real about ourselves. There was a time in my life when I was stewed in bitterness. It bothered me that I didn't have the you know little house with the white picket fence and the wife and the two point four kids and and all this other kind of stuff and and I couldn't see as well as other people and they were getting advantages that I couldn't get and uh, they had this and they had that and I didn't have these other things and all this kind of thing and I was a bitter um, you know uh, you know you know little little screwed up character. Uh, in in my soul, and, an angry man, Dave, an angry man. Uh, you know, an angry, that, especially you know. yeah, especially an yeah. angry young man. And but something weird happened, Jeff and listeners. Now, as I grew older, and as I found my legs, and as I found people that care about me, the richest treasure, by yeah. the way, folks, that you can have is people that care about you. As I grew older, instead of becoming more bitter. I have become a man that is as happy as I've ever been, probably happier than I've ever been. Amen. And it's because I'm try is because I'm trying to get right with God. And the other thing, I'm concentrating on what I've got, not on what I don't have. And and you know, looking around at, at my life, I figure what I have is far more than many other people have. You know, I love uh, I'll tell you guys, you know, I would go into the Cherbin, which is the, uh, which is what used to be the, uh, and still is, I guess, the uh, chat room for um, Urban Family Talk. And people would greet me and they'd say, hey, Dave, how you doing? And I'd say, you know, I'm blessed beyond what I deserve. And that's how I feel. Amen. Now, now, I've got a lot of work left to do. I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to say I'm perfect up in here because <laughs> i still got a big ego and i got a bunch of work to do, y'all. None of us are perfect, A bunch of None work, of brother. A bunch of work. you got to work but it, the, it you, Dave? And yeah, you work yeah, you it. do. You do, Jeff. <laughs> but that's the point. That's the point is 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 yeah. I have to concentrate on, on the good. And sometimes I understand that's tough. Because, well, especially when you have an inconvenience like blindness, uh, you know, and all these other yeah, things that I can't do. But, and, and other people out there have have things that are going on in their lives that are not good. And it's easy to slip into the same kind of bitterness that the despair that I was talking about, the people avoiding, um, can, can, uh, can engender. Okay, but yeah. – it is it, – you can get past it, and I'm not going to get into name-calling, Jeff, or anything like that. I just pray no. that, pe that, that people who are in those situations can find their way out, and they need to understand that God is there, and all they have to do is try. Just reach halfway, and he's going to reach the other half, and that will start them on a good we path. Helped us, isn't and, it, Dave? Yeah. It's helped me and yeah. you. We've helped me on our journeys. You know, it has, um, man. unfortunately, some people give up on that sort of thing as well, don't they? Sadly. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead, and, and, Sorry, and, I'm, I'm... And, and, no, no, brother, it, it's cool. You know, I, I want you to participate here, man. But you know, but but that's that's the point. That brings it right back to the demonstrations for Tommy Robinson. Okay, the, you, you know, because these brothers and sisters out there are sharing love with each other. They're demonstrating uh, for Tommy Robinson and sharing love with him. And again, he's alive because of it, and and the despair is being kept away because of it, because of community. If it's you the want to know, that's keeping them alive, Dave. You know the government yeah, can't yeah. afford it. I mean, so we've been told. I mean, the governor visits him. We've heard once a day. We don't know how true it is, right. but that's right. what we heard. He come and see him, make sure he's okay. So it's quite obvious that the governor of the prison's under pressure to make sure. Because uh, yeah. uh, I think uh, that's I think good. that's the way it is. That's how you do it. That's how you keep people safe with pressure, pressure, pressure. But mm -hmm. like a pressure cooker, isn't it, Dave? You know. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's uh, why I look and they at it. all these people that say, "Oh, what does it achieve? It achieves so much." Oh, ye of little faith in what you do. 
Go on, brother. I yeah. Said, I'm That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just it, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Can I can I just stay on the horse for just a second longer? I mean, I know you're going to want to get up it, it, on this. I want to talk now about Ezra Levant because oh, yeah, there man. has been there has been some talk about him. You know about how um, it seems that he's taking advantage and all this kind of stuff of Tommy Robinson and everything, and about how there's. There was nothing at the Rebel Media except stuff about Tommy Robinson. I have to say, uh, guys, uh, listeners, when I heard that, I went to to um, to uh, the Rebel Media. Uh, you know, I, I I went there and and I looked around, and I didn't see anything at the time. Now there might have been something um, dug down a little bit deeper um, about Tommy Robinson, maybe, but I didn't see anything uh, right up there. About Tommy Robinson, uh, you know it. Uh, there, there are a whole lot of other things um, that um, that are there at the Rebel Media, but not not a whole lot about Tommy Robinson. And the reason that Ezra Levant asks for donations uh, and and goes out and interviews Tommy Robinson the way he does is because we can't trust the UK media. He's he's our media. Uh, Ezra Levant is what I know. I, I rarely speak for Jeff, but I know Jeff and I would call it real news. Okay, yeah, and if if good people want to fund Ezra Levant to do that, then I say God bless him, and I say God bless Ezra, Ezra Levant for doing his thing. He's he's covering a lot of stuff in Canada, but he's covering Tommy Robinson as well, and that is also helping to keep the spotlight on, Jeff. You know what I'm saying, brother? Yes, I certainly do. Um, there was a, someone did say, um, you know, uh, about uh, uh, a colon or so. I can't remember what was, I can't remember the, the word, but I, I just felt it was so insulting actually should say mm-hmm. that. But then you're going, bitterness, twisted, uh, you know, it's hard to people say things like that because uh, Ezra's not just been a friend to Tom, he's a friend to the family. And so, uh, you know, oh, yeah. he's doing what he does because he's an absolutely awesome journalist. And just because you might not like what he's doing, tough. It's tough. It's tough. He cares about what's going on, and that's what he's, he's, he's on a mission to, to do that and to, uh, to make sure things go right. And if you don't like it, well, switch off, you know, go somewhere else. That's why I look at it. There's plenty other news outlets for people to go. Uh, just because yeah. Ezra's doing, um, he's doing a fantastic job. Well, I think so, and I know Dave does. Yes, he is. He's, and millions of us yeah, does, exactly. does do what, you know. Um, so, too bad. Jog on. Do one. Yeah, you know? he, yeah. <laughs> he's a real journalist, but that, but anyway, you know, guys, that that's, you know, Jeff, I don't know if you want to say anything more on this subject, but that's kind of my my two centagos on on the whole thing of um, publicly demonstrating for uh, for Tommy Robinson. I think it's good, and I well, hope Dave, it continues. Uh, and, and if you're okay, just for a second or so, I've just looked at it, it man. and I and I better get Ooh, that, yeah. that call back in, okay, brother? Yeah, you so, better, uh, I'm man. Sorry, yeah, I just, to, I just noticed. Oh, the hey, hey. just clicked over. Oh my goodness, mate. So if yeah, you can uh, yeah, do your yeah, thing for a couple of minutes, I'll and I'll be the... back and join you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you I, go, buddy. I'll, I'll, hold, I'll hold the fort, Jeff. Um, I, I do apologize to you, man, because um, – you know, we, we no, were bloviating no, no, here right. and having a good talk about all this stuff up in here, and, and then, that's good. I tell you what, Jeff, I'm going to dedicate. I'm going to right dedicate back, a quick. Dave. Cheers, pal. Okay, guys. Uh, as Jeff calls back in, I'm going to just uh, run a very quick little song here, dedicated to Jeff and to the problems that Jeff had last Thursday. Um, and, you know, but uh, I know this is a good one, guys. This one is, uh, you know, give you a little bit of a chance to refresh your drinks. This is this will last uh, just under two and a half minutes, uh, guys. Check this out. This is the English Defense League Radio Show you're listening to right now. Silence, I was lying back gazing skyward when the moment got shattered. I remember what she said, and then she fled in the path of a lightning ball. Oh, sir. 
Brilliant. Yeah, that That's was mate. Jake. That was Jake Bug with Lightning Bolt. That's right. Um, <laughs> welcome Brilliant. back to the English Defence League Radio yeah, Show, you guys. Got, yeah, we've got Paul Bright that's joined. He's saying hello, Dave. Uh, hey, he boy. made a comment, and I've got to respond back to me. Oh, so, God, he made a comment. Hi, Paul Paul Bright. <laughs> Uh, he goes on to say, Dave, he goes on to say, my concern is we have become all about Tommy and resisting Islam has become an afterthought. And he says he doesn't like it in capital letters. He doesn't like it. Well, Paul Bavai, the thing about it is that Tommy's always resisted against Islam. He's sitting in prison for resisting against Islam. It's, Tommy, we... Just uh, you know, do you know? Follow Tommy because Tommy is exactly. speaking out and doing what uh, you know. What a lot of us have been doing, especially with like the EDL, we always resisted against Islam, the death cult. Always, Tommy is not, never, not uh, done that, and he's languishing it in a cell because of his views, speaking out against these cultists. You know, he sits in prison. Uh, an innocent man, um, well, we, we're just doing the right thing. We're protesting and we're protesting and we're protesting. That is it. Um, and, and we will always continue uh, to fight against this death goal and those that facilitate it, brother. Just want to let you know. The fight hey, uh, is yeah. over, mate. We're in the middle of a fight. <laughs> just, That's you know, right. small battle at the moment. It's going to heat up. It's going to get far more intense, and in the end, we will prevail. So yep, what's going just... on is the way it's supposed to go on. Yeah. I yes, just want to say that. Good to see engaged. you all. Right, anyway. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Well, you know what? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of these other issues now. Um, you know, and um, this one, this one, I had a little talk with Jan, Um and she offered some uh, some good background. If she just happens to join us, I know she'll want to jump in on this um, this next yeah. story because uh, this here has to do. There's been a whole lot of talk on social media about an amnesty that um, that Boris Johnson, the new prime minister, um, wants to um, wants to uh, go ahead and uh, have. It's a plan he's got so far. Okay. And found this story at Breitbart. This is one that's been shared around yet, but once it's done, we can have a bit of a discussion about it because Jan brought up something to me that I, I had not previously been aware. So, uh, Jeff, if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and, and uh, start this one out, and then uh, and then we'll discuss it. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. All right, guys, three, uh, this is three and a half minutes. You're listening to the English Defense League radio show, and this is from Breitbart. Migration Watch launches petition against Bojo's illegal migrant amnesty proposal by Jack Montgomery on July 26, 2019. Migration Watch UK has launched an official petition against Boris Johnson's proposal to give amnesty to hundreds of thousands of illegal migrants. Boris Johnson told the House of Commons on Thursday that he favors an illegal migrant amnesty and that his government will be looking at the economic advantages and disadvantages of issuing one. Following his first statement to the House of Commons as Prime Minister, the Tory leader was reminded that he had courted popularity with pledging an amnesty for illegal immigrants as Mayor of London by Labour's Ruta Hook, who asked him if he would now be a man of his word and deliver on it. Johnson readily conceded that, on, amnesty on illegal immigrants, it is absolutely true that I have raised it several times and that it did not receive an overwhelming endorsement from the previous Prime Minister when I raised it once in Cabinet as Foreign Secretary, but that it was back on the table now that he was in charge. I do think that our arrangements and theoretically being committed to the expulsion of perhaps half a million people who don't have the correct papers and who may have been living and working here for many, many years without being involved in any criminal activity at all. I think that the legal position is anomalous he said, with people who don't have the correct papers being a reference to people who have entered or stayed in the country illegally. We need to look at our arrangements for people who have lived and worked here for a long time unable to enter the economy, unable to participate properly or pay taxes without documents. He continued, 
casting his earlier suggestion that the people he was referring to hadn't been involved in criminal activity into some doubt. We should look at it and, the truth is, the law already basically allows them an effective amnesty, that's basically where we have settled now. But we should look at the economic advantages and disadvantages of going ahead with the policy that Rupa Hook described, and which I think she and I share, he concluded, to some murmurs of discontent from the Tory backbenches. Alp Mehmet, chairman of the Migration Watch UK think tank and pressure group, told Breitbart London that an amnesty would simply reward illegality and encourage more illegal immigration in the future. He said that his petition, organized in anticipation of Johnson becoming prime minister and pushing for amnesty, carries a clear signal that amnesties for illegal immigration don't work, as has been seen in Spain and Italy. Migration Watch UK has previously published research warning that official estimates for the number of illegal migrants in the country may far below the real figure, and that the impact of social housing, for example, could be massive, with costs running into the billions of pounds. Amnesties for illegal migrants in the United States supposedly offered in hopes that they would clear the authorities' backlog and give them a fresh start to get a grip on illegal immigration, have failed to have the desired effect. Amnesty the illegals simply use their new legal status to bring in relatives and spouses through family reunification or chain migration, while new illegals were encouraged to enter in the belief that they too would eventually be allowed to stay if they simply remained undetected for long enough. Follow Jack Montgomery on Twitter, at Jack Montgomery. Follow Breitbart London on Facebook, Breitbart London. And that is it for this time. Next time, Part 3. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, and may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2019. Anno Domini. Now for Dave's Canes. Extras that help you navigate the new media world. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. Hey, this is Michael Wright. And I'm Shannon Wright. Join us for The Right Way with Shannon and Mike, Monday through Thursday from 7 to 9 a.m. right here on SHR Media. Why are they joining us? For fun things like sports, politics, Oh, maybe some news and entertainment? And all kinds of other things. Money and recipes and events, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so join us Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 a.m. here on shrmedia.com. From a public locker inside a dilapidated Long Island rail station comes a show designed to piss off liberals using truth, facts, and ridicule. The Lid Radio Show, featuring the conservative voice from the People's Republic of New York. The Lid himself, Jeff Dunnett. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com. At Lid Radio, we fight for the truth, justice, and a good kosher T-bone. If you don't listen, Hillary Clinton might sneak into your bedroom in her house coat late at night and blame you for her election loss. It's the Lid Radio Show with Jeff Dunnett. It's your business diva here, Melanie Collette. I am inviting you to a front row seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shakers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. You can't afford to miss it. The new show on the SHR Media Network, Sackheads Against Tyranny. 
on shrmedia.com. Go there quick like a bunny, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, every Wednesday, live and direct on the SHR Media Network. shrmedia.com. Be there. Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, a mere two miles from the state capital, the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon Radio Show can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern, only on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com to listen. You can also watch on the SHR Media Facebook page and the SHR Media YouTube channel. No goldfish were abused in the making of this ad. Hey girls, Carry Girl Gear is here. More and more women every day are concealed carrying, participating in competitive shooting, and getting firearms training. It's not a boys club anymore, and we don't have to shop in their stores anymore either. Finally, a cool and unique clothing line just for women. Dope tees and hats for the patriotic concealed carry and 2A girl. So what are you waiting for? Go check out carrygirlgear.com today. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network.